Welcome back to Firewatch. We're close to Five Mile Creek and the campsite where the smoke is coming from. So, let's continue on. Boy, for as dry as it is this summer, there's an area down here that's uh, lush. Oh, you must be talking about the Aspen Grove down there. Yeah, I think that's where I am. Those trees are actually one root organism. Did you know that? Whoa, cool. I didn't. Yeah, they share their water as a colony that can live for hundreds of years, even through fire. Can you believe you're actually getting paid to learn all of these amazing things? Also, uh, by what it looks like on this map, you'll be coming up on a stream that should lead you towards where we saw that smoke. And here it is. So I think we just follow this up a ways. So beautiful. There's the waterfall. And something hanging off of a branch? Well, it's sort of just floating in midair. It's completely floating in midair. <laughs> That's odd. Uh, there's some cloth out here. It looks like it was torn from something. Strange. I'll keep looking around. I'm kind of scared what I'm going to find. Like, I don't think this is... A, a violent game, but like, I'm kind of worried I'm gonna find a murder scene or something. Ah, oh, there's a beer can. And yeah, that's a waterfall that is marked. Well, it's not marked on this map, but it was marked on one of those maps back there. I guess, uh, Henry just didn't copy it down. Found one of their empties. Guess we're on the right track. Roger that. Oh, can I collect this? No. No one here, huh? site and it looks like they've got a fire. Is it them? No, it seems like it. I swear, they must have dragged four cases of beer out here. Track them down and don't let them see you. What a job this is. How much freaking beer did they bring? My god. Oh, those are my sheets, you little shits. Ah, found my sheets. So they did break into your tower. Looks like... Teen zone. Top hunks. Make up to make out. Pants. They're back. <laughs> I have entered the teen zone. Oh, really? And where's that? It's the name of a magazine for girls. It's on the ground here at their camp. Dangerous hunks. Well, I found some dangerous hunks. What on earth are you... It's another one of those magazines. Tame your hunk. <laughs> a wild animal needs to be potty drained. These girls have a full case of beer left here. A full case. Well, they're impressive little shits, I guess. That is some dedication. I do feel like I should scare the shit out of them. That's odd. Um, are the clothes torn? The clothes are torn. 
And there's a note. The tent looks like it's been through the shredder, which would explain that scrap I found. What could have done that? Like a like a bear or um I don't know, it sounds crazy, but even a bull elk if it's off its rocker. Whatever did it did not hold back. You've got that camera, right? It might be a good idea to get a few snaps, just in case. Yeah, good thinking. Glad I didn't take too many nature pictures. Uh, some of their clothes are all torn up. Uh, that's not good. Mm -mm. This might turn into a rescue mission. Well, maybe I should take one of their sleeping bags as payback. At this stage, take whatever you want. Dear Psycho, I hope you're fucking happy. We're leaving and we're going to find the police or whatever and tell them about how you creeped us creeped on us in the lake, and then came and destroyed our campsite and all of our stuff. Oh, and stealing panties is gross out. You're probably a mental fucking axe murderer and are so going to jail. I hope it was worth being a jerk over some... Over some... Fireworks? There we go. Fireworks. Dick. Okay, so it's kind of what I expected. Or what I suspected, rather. Yeah, stealing panties is gross. So, the person who cut the line was not these two teens, but someone who did all this and stole their clothes and, I guess, tried to make it look like it was them. Threw a bunch of beer cans all around. Same person. Well, I guess... So, it's, it's not the person who broke into our place, obviously. I mean, obviously, the person that broke into the tower was the teens. So the other person we saw must be the person who did this. Who the hell are they and what the hell are they doing? Oh, they're gone for sure. How can you tell? Well, the girls left someone, me, I guess, a note. Well, what's it say? to call the police because they think I attacked them. Oh my god, well, uh, did you? Look, I didn't do anything to them, but it looks like someone had it out for them. Then why do they think it's you? Fuck, I don't know. Huh. Hey, I don't. I believe you. Come on, Henry. All right, all right, it's just, it's weird what happened out here. Weird stuff happens in the woods. It could be other campers. They could be having a bad mushroom trip. We really don't know, but they're gone. There's no way to call the cops. They're not coming back, and we can get to work. I'd really like to start enjoying a quiet summer. Yeah, me too. Find boards downstairs to patch window. Hey, Henry? Yeah. Um, what do you look like? Why are you asking? Because I'm horribly superficial. Do you know Raleigh Fingers? He pitched for the A's? No. Well, I'm the spitting image of him. Is he the guy with the snidely whiplash thing going on from, from the 70s? <gasps> Ooh, my dad loved him. Yeah, that's him. That mustache. Mm. Now you have my attention. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, well, that gives me a good start. Now let's see. In my scope, I can only tell you're a white guy wearing shorts. It's hot. And maybe, by the way, I'm not white. It's not very, uh, you know, PC, or whatever they say. Oh my god, you are the whitest man. Wow. I don't need a spotting scope for that. <laughs> and if not shorts, then what do you normally like to wear?
Now this can't be that hard. Clothes. I don't really think about it. Oh, come on. I got a sweatshirt I like. Good jacket I got at the Buckle Barn. Ooh, I love the Buckle Barn. Just one of those brown ones, you know? I do. Now tell me about your face. I'm looking at you across the bar. What do I see? Uh... <laughs> A uh, pretty thick beard. Oh, have you always had a beard? For a while, yeah. All right, perfect. I want to know about your eyes. Get out of here. I'm drawing you. I need to know. You're what? Is is that okay? Uh. Don't <laughs> don't answer. I'm gonna do it regardless. Fine. Your eyes. Tell me. They look tired. I think. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you know, you hit a certain age and you just... You think you're a younger person who just looks tired all the time. <laughs> Speak for yourself, mister. But I guess that's getting old. Well, some people might see distinguished. Okay, got it. Thank you, Henry. You get what you need? Absolutely. Oh, and that uh, window is all patched up. So, what should I do now? What's next? What's next? What do you think is next? Well, you've been the one giving me tasks for two days straight. What's next is you sit in that room until September 1st and call me at the first sign of smoke. Oh, yeah. Why don't you let me know when you're mentally prepared for that task and, uh, I'll give it to you. Let's see, is there anything I want to do before I do that? Has anything changed in here? Oh, I guess we have a new, um, like, diary entry, right? May 3rd. I think today is going to be normal, although Delilah's having a hell of a time getting the communications wire fixed. Those girls did a real bang-up job fucking us over. A few days before I left, I got a call from Julie's dad. Realized I hadn't really talked to him over the past few years as much as I thought. I think I was so worried about getting... Madeline? on the phone whenever I would call that I just stopped calling altogether. I guess that's the sort of thing writing all this stuff down is supposed to make me realize. Anyway, Mick just wanted to see how I was doing and wanted to have me out and I appreciated it because he's got that ain't no worries bloke attitude, but it doesn't feel right. I bet Madeline's been hard on him. God damn. Here's something else I realized. Julie liked my parents. She liked them both. But that didn't stop her from laying into me with, you're acting like your father. And I realize now that I love the parts of her that she got from Mick, and the parts of her that she got from Madeline scare the living shit out of me. Except for the whole looks department. No denying she lucked out there. Other than that, doesn't really look like anything's changed. Did I get my sheets back? This looks like something that was at the campsite, but I don't know about the sheets. Maybe that's them? Yeah, I guess we got them back. So what are those red flowers that I keep seeing, huh? The Prairie Fire. Castilea. <laughs> Seriously, don't tread on me, friggin' doormat. Alright, I think I'm ready. Okay, I think I am ready to tackle my long-term commitment of keeping this national forest safe from total destruction. I am glad to hear you've really thought this through. You know, I'm gonna hike around for a while before I really put my nose to the grindstone. Oh, huh. yeah, you do that. <laughs> so now I have to say that I'm really ready. Am I really ready? Where could I go? So I can't go anywhere... Well, I can go anywhere that needs a rope, but I can't go anywhere that needs tools to clear stuff. Um, so I've been down here, the medicine wheel. 
Uh, I could see if I could get to the Ruby River. See if it's possible. I mean, it looks like there's a pathway there, right? It looks open. Aside from that... Um... Hmm... Could I try to see if I could head up to Wapiti Meadow? I could do that. Because I couldn't get in from this direction because of the fence, but what if I headed up there from over here? Isn't that around where I went to the cave, though? Where exactly was the cave? Oh, wait, the cave's over here. Yeah, so this wasn't the cave. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, let's just head right down here and see if I can get to the Ruby River. Oh, yeah, look at this. I got there a lot faster than I thought. I <laughs> just started running, and what do you know? This is the Ruby River. So yeah, it's just south from the tower. Down a little pathway, there's some little, like, fences and stuff. Alright, let's check it out. Could have just walked through the water, but I eh, guess it's good to stay dry. Lending Library. Jane Iyer. Here? Don't remember how to pronounce that. Oop, whoops. One chance to die. Didn't we see that in the tower? It's popular out here. Ron, really wish the powers that be could issue us radios that didn't suck gas. Most of the time I'd prefer to keep things pen to paper, but every once in a while it'd be nice to get a hold of you right away. My sister keeps leaving me messages at the main office, but I don't think she gets that I took the job so I wouldn't have to deal with her or mom. I've been sitting at the spot for a while now, thinking about what to say to her, but I'm a quarter way through a bottle of fifes instead. Miss you, Dave. Okay, so that explains something I was wondering about. I was wondering why Ron and Dave were communicating with notes instead of over radio. But uh, apparently Ron just liked writing, plus the radios kind of sucked anyway. Oh. Wait, I could have uh, called about the note. I wonder if there's any way to call now. Uh, probably not. Let's see. To Lake, to Two Forks, Cottonwood Creek. Okay, nothing particularly interesting. Just some more of the path. Oh, there's so much to explore. So cool. to get through here. Now, uh, where's the pathways? Sort of like south? Like this way? Where's the, where's the path? It should just be like right here, right? This is south-ish. Yeah, I mean, it's like south-east a little bit. Which is like... It's like right here. Seems like it's blocked, but I can't even attempt to clear it. Is there no other way? 
Hmm. I guess I could try to go downstream or upstream? Because I think that map over here in the supply box, I think it showed what looked like another pathway over the river. Yeah, like right here. Because we're here, but apparently there's another pathway here. Hmm. How do I get there, though? That's... Like... There. Hmm. Let me try going downstream. Oh, well, that's obviously not going to work. That's also <laughs> definitely not going to work. Hmm. Alright, let me try to find that other pathway across the river. So it could be out this way. I'm staring at the pathway that goes out here to the Thoroughfare Trail, which goes to the Thoroughfare Trailhead, which I believe is where I hiked in from. So if I follow this, maybe there'll be another pathway that leads down across the river. I don't know, it seems so barren out there though, like it looks like you're really not supposed to actually walk there. But we'll see. Oh, that's comforting. The trail out is blocked. I mean, you could totally climb over that, but like, that's creepy. Okay, now I'm ready. Let's get to work. Good, now get to work. Well, I meant to report it, but oh well. <laughs> Damn, Henry, Henry, slow down. Having a nice afternoon? Not too bad. I could get used to it out here. That's nice. Look, um, I called with bad news. Two young women, Chelsea Stevens and Lily McLean, were reported missing. They've got parents out in California who haven't heard from them in a week. They were supposed to meet an aunt down in Cody. If they're the girls from last week, then... You're probably the last person to have seen him. Uh, you should tell whoever that I'm happy to be questioned. Look, it's not going to be an issue. Uh, I mean, if, if they turn up dead, then maybe. Should I just not say anything and save us the trouble? No, say something. I... I think it's worth mentioning something. Yeah. I'll, uh... I'll keep it vague. I, I really don't want to talk to the cops. Me neither. All right, Henry, thanks. Enjoy the sunset. Henry? Henry, wake up. Get out of bed and pick up the radio. What do you want? Hey, you big dumb idiot. Oh. Jill, this is a dream. Babe, it's late. I know it is. You sound tired. Hmm, I am. Are you having a nice time? Henry? Are you having a nice time? Sure. Are you? Everything good there? Jules? What? Oh, sorry, Henry. Yeah, I'm good. Oh, well, that's good. Well, I'll let you get back to sleep then. <clears throat> okay, Jules. Delilah seems nice. Mm-hmm, sure. Bye, baby. No, I guess it wasn't a dream, just patching a call through the radio.
go into the supply drop. Retrieve supplies. Is it too much of a pain okay. in the ass to bring supplies all the way up to our towers? Well, I get my stuff hand delivered. Oh, how's that work? It's the perks of a decade of service. You're out hiking in 90 degree heat and I get to do crosswords. Isn't life miserably unfair? Anyway, when you find the supply drop, remember it's not just for you, okay? Other lookouts, biologists, a few people get their food there, and I don't want to have to call in for more. There should be loads of good stuff, though. Beans, prunes, jerky. You know, my sister eats six prunes a day. Six. She's, like, really precise about it. She'd be great at this job if she didn't need wheelbarrows full of marijuana to function. <laughs> I'm sure it's mostly going to be beans, though. If the stalker back so, at the lookout's any location. Like, two weeks ago, you called me in the middle of the night. You were sleeping, I guess, and all I heard was the name Jules through the mumbles. I just thought it was so sweet. I wanted to wake you up, but then I thought maybe you were having a nice conversation, and I'd just be spoiling it. I hope you're doing okay, you know, when it comes to her. Oh, so it was a dream. I shouldn't be out here. Yes, you should. No, I just ran away from my problems. No, you didn't. We all fuck up. Oh, uh, look. So, a couple of months before I took this job, I... <laughs> I was with this guy. Javier. Ugh, he's incredible, caring, sexy as hell. He was a driller down in Casper. We dated for almost five years. I was working with the Wyoming Outdoor Leadership School, and I was obsessed with it. I wanted to be an instructor so badly. And I was sure I was going to marry Javier as soon as I could be bothered. Walls was also a good excuse to get out of town, drink whiskey in the mountains, cut loose. <sighs> then, um, Javier's brother got killed working in Gillette, and <sighs> for some reason... I didn't come home. Javier said it was fine. He'd go to the funeral, take care of his mom, stuff like that. It'd be easier solo. When he came back, he left me. I came out here. I lied and told my sister he fucked our neighbor. So, I lied to you. I came out here with a broken heart just like you. I figured you've told me so much about you. So, you know, there's something about me. We both fucked up. All right, I got everything I need out of here. Time to chow down. Just yours, right? Who do you think I am? It feels awkward that I didn't say anything about what Delilah just said. You've got a front row seat for what might be the biggest fire of the year. Whoa. Yeah, it's really going. I'm gonna call it in. They'll send in a hotshot crew for some suppression, but... I bet we'll be stuck with her for the rest of the summer. And she doesn't have a name yet. I usually think of something funny or something practical or a little risque when coming up with them. But why don't you do the honors? So, no ideas, huh? Uh, maybe we call it the Flapjack Fire. Can you sell that as a name? You really like that, huh? Yeah, I said I did. It's funny. Fair enough. Flapjack fire it is. They'll probably ask me if it was a camp cooking accident or something. So there's this creek down the hill, and, um, you know what my favorite thing to do is? What's that? I love to take a bottle of whatever I have on hand, plunge it deep into the water, and let it chill in there all day. And then, on nights like tonight, when it is so disgustingly hot, I have something nice and cool to drink. I learned that from my sister in Santa Fe. She'd do that with a bottle of tequila near her house and make margaritas the size of your head. You'd like it there. I've had one too many bad experiences with tequila. A little reticent to try it again. Well, maybe you just need a new good experience with it. Uh, yeah, maybe. 
Are you looking at the fire? Yeah, I am. I love how they look at night. During the day, it's just smoke, but when the sun is down, you can just get lost. Yeah. I'm glad you're here. Me too. Good. I don't talk to the other lookouts as much as I talk to you. Not in the same way. I know it's probably been a while since you've connected with someone the way we have. <laughs> I don't mean to get all heavy, but it's been really nice. I wish I was over there. It'd be nice to be near somebody. We could talk without these radios. We could, um, you know. Um. What? What could we do? Well, let me tell you. fishing without a license? It's one fish, and I'm sick of all the stuff I got to eat. Well, I won't tell anyone you're a poacher. That reminds me, I keep hearing reports from Fish and Game about a problem bear they're trying to keep tabs on. Can you search around the lake for fresh tracks and just let me know what you find? There was a crew burning fire lines out to the east, and, um, you know, I think sometimes it riles up the wildlife. Uh, does problem actually mean murderer? Like, how Charles Manson is a problem cult leader? Oh, come on. You just have to look for tracks. That's it. Ugh. Can't believe I'm gonna leave this planet as a pile of bear shit. <laughs> Thank you, Henry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Illegal fishing. <laughs> yeah, just throw it on the ground, Henry. Oh, I can put it away. There we go. I have no idea how to take it out, but I assume I will when the time is right. Alright, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're going to look for bear tracks and go fishing. <laughs>